Hey guys, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Swamya Shivastav. Swamya have a four plus year of experience in forensics, OSNT, and he involved in a lot of uh, forensic investigations, the government services and private services. And it is basically a great honor for us to have a expert like him who actually, you know, started OSNT practices. And I'm, I'm actually, Swamya, you know, I got your profile after seeing your content, which you basically posted on LinkedIn. And I'm I'm pretty much inspired from that content. And that is why, you know, I, I, I tried uh, reaching out to you for this particular show. And thanks for taking out the time for this particular session. Following you also from quite a while. And till now, the, all of the content you are posting regarding CSSP and most of the certifications is really pretty awesome. So thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks, Omya. And I believe the, the, title, the, the title of the session today or the the, inter the session is all about the leverage digital for footprints for open source investigation, right? Yes. Hmm. So I think there is a very big buzzword is happening right now. Oh, SINT, digital investigations or digital information collections and all that. Could you can could you please share your experience on what is OSINT and how this OSINT, OSINT is basically used uh, in the organizations and what is the use cases on a high level? See, generally, I would just start up by saying that in India right now, what I would say is uh, OSINT is mostly promoted by OSINT tools and people have marketed OSINT as just uh, he, we or investigators, whoever is doing OSINT, he's, he's just using tools. So first of all, this is a very great myth because if you're using some tool or some third party script to gather some information and you're saying you're doing OSINT, so that's not too for sure. So OSINT is nothing but gathering information from the open sources and then analyzing it, connecting all the dots and producing any actionable intelligence out of it. So like actionable intelligence, it means key, whatever intelligence or whatever output I'm able to produce with the information I'm getting from open source, I would be able to take action on it. So any law enforcement body, any organization, any uh, government body could be able to take action on it. So public sources or open sources are nothing but the sources that are publicly available or that can be view uh, viewable to everyone. Okay. So, yeah. So, so normally, you know, uh, uh, we we go through this, you know, CEH or ethical hacking process. We say the first step is basically reconnaissance, footprinting, and all that. And suddenly, just year back or two year back, this buzzword came: OSINT. Is it same? Like, is it? It's just like a footprinting, or is it something more advanced technique? Because Shodan was there from last ten years, fifteen years, and we are using Shodan for information gathering. We use who is for the information gathering. So why this word is so special we can just use another word which is called as a information gathering so i think uh, i just i just started prop that uh, osint is mostly marketed by organizations agencies as osint tools in india at least because mm -hmm. the value of osint abroad or in most of the countries where they understand the value so we are most mostly focused on information gathering for a particular person or a particular suspect or a target so in footprinting and reconnaissance, we mostly include websites, we mostly include digital applications and most yeah. of the subjects to gather information, right? But in open source intelligence or OSINT, we also focuses on a particular individual. Let's say in organizations, we also do brand monitoring or uh, employee background check, let's say, for example. So there we are trying to just figure out a total footprinting, a total uh, information about a particular person or a particular employee in a company or a particular company as well. So. OSINT, I don't think the word uh, justifies the uh, like the whole information gathering criteria. But uh, I would suggest I would also tell you that OSINT is not only using tools. OSINT is about investigations. OSINT is about connecting dots and in the end creating a final output. So yeah, as you talked about, we have Shodan, we have uh, let's say Spiderfoot, we have Meltigo, we have many such mm -hmm. tools in OSINT that people use and we also use. The only concept is that, uh, of course, we uh, let's say for, let's let's take an example as a SOC analyst. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is a SOC analyst is using some three or four tools, but also he gets false positives, right? 
so that is why he is given the position he is given the position to analyze every single data point and then take a action accordingly but talking about open source intelligence nothing can be fully automated so it's not like ki i'll give you a tool and you'll uh, a non technical person or anybody just uses that tool and gather information out of it so we need to connect dots we need to have that investigation mindset hmm. to produce any actionable intelligence we have to filter out queries we have to filter out large data sets because as we know the data we are filtering out is in tons because if i'm searching for a particular person named somme shrivastav in delhi so you would find a lot of a lot a lot True. of data in that right True. so i need to filter out the exact person i'm looking for number one number two i need i must have a particular skill set technical set to find that exact data and also find some sensitive data behind it so that that uh, osint is not uh, only basically about stalking a person or just knowing uh, uh, what he does it is about knowing his digital presence or attributing attributing himself with his digital digital footprints so let's say we also do this uh, in in base of dark web investigations so what happens is as if if a person let's say for example uh, we are this session is not uh, entirely about dark web but i would suggest two or three factors that would relate our uh, today session to that so just was saying ki let's say in uh, dark web anybody whoever is uh, uh, having an account or having a sock account obviously he don't have an account with his own name or uh, with those uh, his own identity but when we are doing dark web investigations the number one point we put in mind is that any person who is using internet when when he started using internet he is not uh, on the first place he is on is not on the dark web right he must be on the surface web he must have left some some of his footprints there so in also dark web investigations we like to link every single intelligence pointers or every every single pointers on dark web to the surface web so okay. there also osin comes in face place where we try to attribute a digital presence okay so in layman term if i if 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 this might be you know this video will be uh, watch uh, will be viewed by the a basic user and who want to make a career in cyber security and all that and osint is something new for him so from a layman perspective if i say what is osnt so what is all about this a layman perspective for osnt is as simple as searching for publicly available information hmm. trying to find sensitive information hmm. and then converting it into intelligence or okay just producing something out of that information is it possible can you just give an example so it give the better clarity to the viewers yeah. sure so let's say for example a law enforcement body or a government body give me a task that uh, a case has occurred a person is uh, is been missing hmm. so let's say in that case i would like to first confirm or i would like to first check about all that about all the footprints about that person on the internet hmm. so footprints contains like every single digital presence of that person so let's hmm. say that person is following some bodies or the person i i want to know the person's interest so also not in only in government also sometimes and most of the times uh, these attacks happens or any cases of cyber crime happens mostly most of the pointers are related to open source intelligence or osint because if anybody if a scammer is calling me saying that i i am calling uh, i am your isp i am calling from airtel uh, is your address this can you tell me your email id can you send me your aadhar so he already have done his recon here he has already done his uh, background check about me so he has done osint on me only so all the footprints all the all my digital presence till now from from where i am be using internet he have gathered uh, he have gathered him <coughs> to produce a uh, to make a to leverage basically attack on me so same goes for government bodies as well we have to track persons we have to track people so there we just need to attribute intelligence about the particular person let's say in which companies he have applied before or what groups are he part of or what exactly are his interest or what where exactly that person is from if i have a email id of a person of a suspect in let's say any sesame based case i need to find that person's identity i need to find that person's address i need to find that person's uh, interest i need to uh, find that presence uh, person's social media accounts yeah. so that is all linking information okay uh, it's a very good information you know uh, when we talking about the social media and all that and i think that give the more clarity we, we have to be very careful while using a social media because nowadays we are posting all activities in social media we are here we are there and you know in, and if you are going for the long travel and all that you start posting the pictures in every 5 5 minutes that okay we reach this point and we reach that point and that that can be the passive information uh, for the hackers or any you know the user who who, who trying to find that information right yeah yeah so as you just said now i would just mm. like to include one more one, one or two points mm. just like that ki 
if you are not even posting something online mm. even just when you are visiting google if anybody is visiting google or visiting any particular website so mm. we leave a lot of footprints there as well we leave our user agent as well mm. as the ip based informations to google as well as my isp also mm. i leave many such footprints regarding uh, with my browser so let's mm. say if i am uh, visiting any website i am visiting that through google so many of the times and most of the time, times i would say if that website has, doesn't have any secure uh, secure based policies what will happen is google will index that particular data point that i have uploaded into that website to google itself mm. what happens is let's say i visit a government <coughs> website for example mm. and i uploaded my aadhar there or mm. i uploaded i i made account there i i made my details like aadhar and email for the registration mm. part so what happens is ki many of the times such websites are not configured mm. and google index that data so what happens is me as a open source intelligence i would like to i would i, I would be willing to take your footprints or generate your footprints out of that so if a general public viewer is able to see my address on google or my address or my most of the footprints on the open source so that is a big source of concern right true true so while even normally accessing internet we need to have some opsec precautions so opsec is nothing but operational security precautions so even okay. we investigators while investigating we like to have some particular opsec precautions in our browser in our vm so we don't investigate from our host machine we don't investigate from a host browser where we have uh, login before so it's a total new uh, data set we are using or uh, identity identity we are using to investigate so even a normal public user or a normal viewer trying to access any website he should also take care of some basic precautions while visiting that website or entering his or her details okay so um, as we're talking about you know uh, the art of information gathering or art of in, in, in intelligence and all that so today if we talk about 2023 how we see osint and you know how it is used in our digital forensics in 2023 i would suggest i would say ki osint <clears throat> is still very premature in india so mm. osint as alone as a skill if you are having that in your cv and mm. you are expecting to get a job so mm. you must add more skills so osint is a very great skill to have osint <laughs> is not currently a domain in india i would say it is yeah. still a skill set right so as a skill set it's a really great skill set uh, skill set to have let's say for anybody any pen tester mm -hmm. any api tester anybody in most of the fields in cyber as you know prabh right mm -hmm. the osin is the very very basic or very initial part of any investigation or any um attacking as well right if we prepare for a vapt report if we want to recon on a website so that is only that is also osin only we we want to gather more and more footprints more and more information about that website right so as now in india i would say it's still premature but if you mm -hmm. talk about other other countries it is still a very mature field i'm telling you prab ki the same field we are just uh, like if somebody say somebody is a intelligence analyst or open source analyst and he does a particular investigation for any ngo any law enforcement body or even any organization so there is a lot of scope also in india if you are talking about corporate intelligence or business intelligence they are somewhat uh, they, they have somewhat set a level to uh, for us researchers but mm. still osint alone cannot be a field right now in india mm. yeah prab as you know uh, like uh, last to last year i guess the ukraine russia thing happened so the, at that time also many researchers many open source researchers what they did they created some certain portals so they used to profile these to track russia's <coughs> activity regarding ukraine Mm -hmm. and they used to put that to their portal so okay. they were investigators only they were they, uh, they were all our uh, open source investigators only they used to track everything they used to uh, monitor those particular russian army footprints and they, then they uh, posted that to their portal so that went very viral after that osint is very much growed so i would also give credits to those researchers and uh, those people who gave their input at that time and osint is not just limited to organization or let's say law enforcement it is something of a big thing so it's like hmm. uh, as i said in the very beginning it's not it's not just using tools hmm. it's and it's doing a particular investigation on a big propaganda as well <clears throat> so okay it's as a total worldwide research if i'm sitting here i'm searching about a person or a, a suspect in pakistan let's say so mm -hmm. he can also do the same right the information True. the data pointers all the things they are in turns they are on the hmm. internet they are indexed by every single country every single search engine so yeah that's the overall scope so um, like the we we have a profile like you know cyber security experts pen testers socks specialist uh, architect appsec 
security managers and all that. So we have this kind of profiles. So do you think so that this will be considered as a one dedicated profile where the company will hunt for OSNT experts and all that, or will it be this merge with any SOC or it become a requirement in the pen testing skills? The reason why I ask this question is, if you take example in India, in, in India, job market is basically very dynamic. Okay, if you work for the big four, if you work for the big companies, for every process, we we have expertise. Yeah. And that what happened in big big four companies. And when you're talking about the small term, small companies or mid-term companies, they're always looking for the profile, which is basically having a dynamic skill. So if I'm running a enterprise company or if I'm running a consulting services, I can see that, okay, I'm looking for the pen tester with the OS anti-knowledge. Because definitely when we're doing a pen testing, you need to gather information about the target or yep. gather information about the client when, when, when we involved in black box testings and all that, or blind box testing. So what do you think, Swami, as you you do a lot of consulting on OSANT, as I can see that, so how, how do you see this industry? Like, will it, will it going to be merged with pen testing services or will it be running as a separate services? Because you get paid for the skill, I'm sure. You get paid for your skill, you get you, you and especially when it comes to OSNT, you get paid for your thought process. Yes. So very, very great thought <clears throat> and question. Prab. I would say ki right now in India, OSINT is uh, merged within threat intelligence. So threat intelligence as a skill or a overall skill where we include many such locating APT adversaries, locating footprints on dark web, attributing them, lo- uh, tracking APT groups, monitoring threat intelligence feeds. So all those things that are somewhere or the other related to OSINT. So right now it is totally merged with OSINT. But as yeah. your question is, it will for sure be a particular separate domain in mm. India as well as in other countries. It is still now in mm. other countries. If you see, we have a profile for open source investigator, open source intelligence investigators. But right now we have submerged profile regarding threat intelligence. SOC is a very basic part of it. So SOC doesn't involve, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say um, investigation, but SOC is a very basic level of investigation in an, in an organization. The mm. next step is threat hunting, of course. After that, threat intelligence is all about getting intelligence, getting information about a particular threat. So okay. their investigation comes a lot of handy and uh, OSINT is involved. But for sure in the future, I would say e- OSINT would be a totally separate skill in India as well. E- so open source wh- investigation profiles. Yeah. So what kind of industry, you know, will look for the OSNT? Because see, if you ask me on the GRC, I'm good in GRC and pen testing and I think I think something I did 14 years back. So I don't know about now the new trend, but I'm still learning. So we know about GRC industry is focused by big fours and all that. So when you're talking about the OSNT kind of a job, especially in India, because see, not everyone will get an employment outside of India. And some of the folks definitely are new students, aspiring students, want to make a career in uh, uh, in OSNT. So what do you think, what are the target companies and other companies we have, which might look for such kind of a profile? Okay. So first of all, I would start with the LEA profiles. So government-based profiles, they are for sure looking for OSINT even right now, even in the future, but talking about the organization level. So Mm. mostly all of the fields, if you talk about, I would say the number one field will be the defensive field, of course, threat intelligence and digital digital forensics and all. All these blue team-based fields would for sure take an open source intelligence analyst in their teams. Right now also many other, uh, there are many other companies taking such roles. I would say uh, Mm. even EY, TCS, Yahoo. Mm. So they have a particular particular spot for OSINT people or people who are good in digital attributions and mm. they deploy them into different departments because of course they are consultancy firms. And mm. as you just asked me, ki, what's the scope for consulting? So still now, consulting has a really great scope. So if I talk about business consulting or if I talk about uh, open using open source intelligence in a business point of view, so that is a really great domain uh, that we have even uh, picked up and I would suggest most of the students if they are trying to achieve this skill set, also mm. get a skill set, also get a research a methodology in the business uh, point of view as well. Mm. So let's say employee, employee background check or business competitor intelligence, brand protection, brand monitoring. So these are some domains that still have a very great uh, potential and they are still very, uh, done very great in India. Mm-hmm. So you will also get even uh, paid as well, a very great uh, pay as well. Also, as well as uh, open source intelligence is concerned, it will be a separate field. And mostly, most of the fields, I would say, they will require them. So, of course, the I would say, I would uh, safely comment on the blue team fields. I can't uh, really tell you about the red team based fields, but I think they're also uh, the requirement for a reconnaissance expert or a uh, recon based expert is required. So if somebody is good in pen testing, 
and uh, they need a person to just do recon or a hmm. person to just do OSINT. So also they may require that. So, so, so it's a it's a very good point that you said about like you know red team can be you know can be the good next opportunity along with that in you know, the blue team is already happening. So my question here is you know how to become a OSINT you know expert you know what is the skill required if we see i don't want this video to be more like a gyan to them that okay because that is available in google oh, sure. uh, I'm, I'm you know very well so definitely when you were looking for the osnt you also did you had some struggle right you know because every blog talk about you know this is the four tools you need to expertise in that and okay. networking knowledge but as i said you know when i make these videos okay i want to give one value to the customer when i want to give value to the subscriber i want to give value to the viewer who watching the who taking out his 30 minutes 40 minutes for this video so i'm, I'm going to ask a very practical question somya that if someone want to become a osint expert or intelligence and expert what is a myth and what is a fact all right so starting about myths, so as in the very beginning, I said ki people people very forcefully they try to depend on third party scripts and third party tools to mm. choose and say they they are doing OSINT or they are doing open source intelligence mm. because it's a very easy way out now. It's mm. it's kind of a shortcut for you to gather information. Mm. So I would first like to categorize open source intelligence into two two basic domains. Number one, we talk about data gathering. Number second is analyzing that data pointers in data gathering. Of course, for sure, we some of the times we need tools. Most of the time we need tools. We use tools to gather some particular set of data factors, hmm. but that doesn't mean we don't make our own scripts. So we need to automate tasks. We need to automate most of the operations. We just hmm. need to understand the crawling mechanism behind that particular tool. See in open source, as we all know, right? Every tool is free, let's say. So most of the tools, if you if you have, let's say, got a tool by somehow or if somebody told you a tool, people, what they do, they, they just depend on that particular tool. They don't try hmm. to understand the crawling behind. What happens is the tool will work for one week or the another week. And one day the tool will gone. The tool, the, the contributors of the tool, maybe they shut down the tool or the tool was taken down somehow. So mm. what then? Then you just need. So that is why I'm all. Um, I all. I always say that you need to be a good researcher. Mm. In order to be a good researcher, you must know how that tool is working from the back end. Mm. Even if you are not from a programming background, but you are aware of basic programming logics, the I, the very basic thing you can do is decompile that tool. Hmm. Decompile that GitHub script. Check what API is working. Check hmm. how that particular tool is gathering intelligence or gathering data for you. So hmm. of of course they they don't gather intelligence. They just gather data. So the hmm. basic concept is you will put an input query. It, it will give a output query. But after that, when we have data, after that you have to analyze that. Hmm. So there is nothing. Even uh, I would also link this subject to automated and uh, manual pen testing as well, Prab. So people, I was about to I was about to say this exactly. thing that this is the small yeah. information to all the people you know even you making a career in pen testing making career in SOC and all that until and as you don't know how the process works there's no point of making a mastery in the tool. Exactly. So if you're talking about Nmap Nmap as a script you just enter the IP you enter the plugins and it will scan the system but what is the purpose behind the scanning how it's going to scan what is the concept of scan so it is very important in any vertical no matter osnt pen testing sock and all that process understanding is very important which actually the it is the well 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 articulated by swami also you know you should compile decompile the things you can see the jit scripts and get get scripts and all that and how it works so it's a very good point swami and i completely agree with that and but i have seen you know the trend in last five years you know people become fond of scripts okay they download the script from github and they run that script and then they so-called themselves as a pen testers and all that which it is actually not a, a good sign okay mm -hmm. if you want to be expert you need to know scripting you need to know i think some programming you must require it for os and correct me if i'm wrong or if you're not then you have to rely on the third party tools what you say yeah so in os and i would say mm -hmm. you you would require a basic certain le uh, level of programming just for automating your task because we are we are analyzing big data points right mm -hmm. if if i'm monitoring something on dark web or let's say i'm monitoring a particular four or five websites so i i won't be there for uh, for let's say um, i won't be monitoring that by just opening the website manually and just sitting here and watching the website no so i need some automating aut automation based tools that just uh, notify me whenever whatever is happening or uh, if any anomaly is happening let's say so 
anything like that in in open source intelligence as well while gathering data or also while compiling data you need a basic level of programming so i would i wouldn't say ki you need a very high level of programming to uh, do that but the main value of programming is to make or create certain tasks and save time so mm. let's say you create a you create a certain automated script for yourself for your investigations you do you you are not sharing that with anyone you are just using that for yourself so that would that would save a lot of time for you as a open source investigator you are not relying on any third party script also i would say a very great point here prab we talk about operational security a lot so if i am investigating about myself let's say just take this example a total different point of view let's say if indian army is attacking pakistan uh, army so they don't want them to know that where our base is located no so hmm. if i am using more and more third party tools i am giving my data to that tool True. if i am searching about a particular person that tool that database in that tool they have my footprints they have my data pointers that from this ip even if i am using a particular set of uh, um, let's say opsec i am using a third party vm i am using some proxy and server but if i am searching about a particular suspect or target that is a third party tool i don't know about the developer i don't know about the tool my data footprints my footprints that i am investigating on a particular person right they are being notified there they are being noted there so that is also a particular very i would say great and point we, that and we, we make and we own. we are not even sure about the tool accuracy also whether it it is also, basically collecting the information yeah. from a right source exactly so even let's say if, even if you decompile that tool even if you if you try to just study about that tool if you are aware that from where that tool is gathering data you can create your own tool maybe you can get more and more results from your own tool you don't have to buy that particular subscription or api subscription for that no hmm. that that i agree with that point that that is the reason yeah. you know when we working on the tools when we talking about the uh, validations and all that it is always a challenge for us how you basically streamline and all that so yeah. that that is that is how it works so i agree with that point so when it come to sequence of the skill set sequence of the skill set step by step so what is the first skill the person required then second then third and uh, do you recommend any books and resources that they can refer you know to become an expert the number one skill i would say anybody should start with is google docs okay so google docs is not uh, see i want to explain google docs again again because these days it's very trending i would say i would uh, i would explain for the very beginning um very beginners but i would say ki google docs is not only just using a single query or uh, using some sort of queries together it's about creating your own creating your own set of command from those docs so let's okay. say there is a really great platform to test those skills as well we have google hacking database exploit db so on exploit db um like i guess it's been a while but i used to contribute a lot so i had okay. a really great rank there i used to put my own uh, reconnaissance based uh, command queries even for bug bounty people who does bug bounty they use a lot of google docs right so i would say google docs from the very beginning you just need to know how to play with them so number one skill set i would suggest is just start learning google docs experiment with them search on a particular target and use a particular doc then remove that doc and see what google is giving you so okay number one thing is google doc number two as you just uh, asked me number two would be to have some certain knowledge about linking and using particular keywords so even in google doc even just understand google is a search engine true we he just pro, it just processes data on basis of our keywords so let's say if i'm just talking to keyword uh, talking to uh, google what is this or um, how to do pen testing so google is not my friend no he will no. only categorize how is this pen testing yeah. it he it will it will uh, it will basically analyze every single keyword i have put there but if i'll just only talk about a single query let's say i talk about pen testing space beginner <coughs> it will give me better results right So same talking about google docs you don't have to just congest uh, you don't have to just uh, mix up a different google docs and put that in a particular search engine you just need to know the exact doc query to use with another one so that only comes when you start playing with them so that okay. would be i think the very initial steps of starting with osint that you need to know about certain google docs you need to know about how to play with them then number second would be to analyze data pointers so as i said you need to be very creative regarding the keywords so sometimes let's say sometimes if i am analyzing something if i am analyzing a particular person and i know that person is from a particular university or graduated from a particular university 
So the university, let's say it's Delhi University, for example. So I can write. So for me to write that on Google, I need to be very creative. I cannot write directly that Swami Shrivastav Space Delhi University. That I can also do that, but that won't give me very refined results. So I need to be creative. That how Delhi University plays a vital role in my life, or how I may have used Delhi University keyword in my profile. So True. I have to be very concrete to that. So I would say these will be some of the skills uh, to start up with open source intelligence. After that, I must say that you this all this is the whole game that comes from uh, again and again practicing, uh, practicing, and of course, uh, intelligence is only created when you connect <coughs> dots. Mm-hmm. So information you can gather. As I said, there are two basic steps: data gathering and then data analyzation or data intelligence. So gathering data maybe you can do, but mm-hmm. after that, linking those all the data pointers to a particular person. because as we know false positives are always always involved but right here the beauty and also um kind of not a beauty uh, in open source intelligence we tell that uh, let's say for, for example in digital forensics right if i have been given a 1 tb hard drive to gather intelligence or i have given a 10 gb data storage device or any such uh, limit so i the only the only maximum limit to gather intelligence is 10 GB or mm-hmm. 1 TB, but in open source intelligence, it is immense. So you cannot give up too early. You cannot also reach to a conclusion too early. So I used to do the uh, do the uh, do these do these things a lot in my initial days, and that was a really great disaster for me when I just started up in the domain. So let's say if I am tracking a particular adversary or particular target in a, in some another country, and every single pointer it is showing me that that guy is from let's say Pakistan. So I used to believe that very early. I used to reach to a conclusion that yeah, that guy would be from Pakistan. But no, here if I'm working with any enforcement director, any law enforcement agency, the whole their whole um, base of investigation is through me. So if I'll give any single input that is not the input, they will go and arrest somebody else. I will be fired. One investigation would be fired, <laughs> quite on me only, na. So the only thing I'm telling you about is many of our times and most of the times the data we see in open source is tampered. Somebody have just only if any will also uh, when anybody would uh, investigate on a particular advanced suspect or somebody on dark web and all. So you cannot be very very sure that the person that uh, all the footprints are showing uh, are that only. So you need to verify. So verification is very important in this field. The, all the data pointers we have now. even when 90% of the times we think that is the only um route through that data pointers many of the time it's not so that is also a main factor so the most important thing is basically the skill of analysis of the data like you can learn the skill how to gather but that an interpretation of the data and analysis of data is something you need to learn more effectively correct me if i'm wrong yeah So, do you recommend any course, or do you recommend any? No, it's not everyone is a self learner, right? So, do you recommend any course, or do you recommend any book that you know the people can refer uh, to get the idea about OSNT? So, when I started up my uh, in my initial days, no. So, I used to I was a lot of active on Twitter. So, on Twitter, on Discord, there are a lot of great researchers. They still have a great name in our community. Let's say I talk about Mika Hoffman from. Uh, there was a project known as Ocean Curious. So mm-hmm. it's still it's it's abandoned from quite a while. But yeah, that guy was a founder of that particular project, and uh, I still know. I I used to be there in the Discord community. I had a certain decent role in that. I don't used to. I was not very active in terms of uh, sharing sharing stuff. But I used to listen. I used to figure out things that what they're posting, how they're doing that particular investigation, and what are the different domains. Mm-hmm. So I would suggest that if you talk about uh, people, Mika Hoffman. So there's a they also a um, woman named uh, named Ritu Gill. So these these they these people they have their own ocean based projects, ocean based communities on Twitter on Discord. So anybody starting up. for 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 only free they just need to follow them they just need to see what they are posting if you talk about course so there are really great courses as well if i talk about a course from sans so there's mm-hmm. a sector 584 i i don't remember the exact name but uh, sans only have two courses based on ocean but very expensive so a, if sans yeah, sponsor will be yeah um, uh, if if any student want to learn about ocean did so do you recommend any udemy course or youtube uh udemy resources like see of course there are a lot of uh, courses regarding to open source intelligence or uh, dark web as well 
but mm-hmm. i cannot suggest a single one based on uh, the queries i would say ki most of the information in the open source we can uh, just gather by youtube so on youtube also there are some certain great channels from where you can learn osint so i would say uh, channels as in if you can just search on sans uh, cyber defense so in, mm-hmm. even in sans cyber defense many people they have given a great talk or great lecture on osint so and mm-hmm. that is not not only basic the, the basic point is <clears throat> there are 40 50 minutes session and they have included every single of their learning every single of their factors or pointers there so even if you look the look the previous playlist from previous years as well no mm-hmm. that would be also really great to view and watch and learn so of but, course i would say ki there are many such sources but yeah you need to be good in research that would be the okay. main pointer so okay yeah so uh, as per we were discussing about different aspects and different uh, parts of ocean right mm-hmm. so i think i think now i would uh, i would show some of the demonstrations or in a practical point of view how osint is working okay so as as i begin ki any initial step or any investigation is obtaining information and through open source we try to obtain that information and then convert that to actionable intelligence that is only osint so i just mm-hmm. also told you about osint as a really great aspect in business intelligence law enforcement and national security as well so mm-hmm. one more thing that we need to be very clear of is in open source intelligence or osint we need to have a really clear clear strategy and framework so strategy is searching for the exact particular person i am looking for and don't want to search for false false positive of course we want to filter out data that is no longer needed to me so of course as we just talked about if we are uh, doing any such thing in uh, open source or any such thing in uh, osint we need to be very concrete about the framework or up particular kind of a blueprint about our investigation if from which source we have to move on to which one so that is a very great point here so now who uses osint so as we talked about ki many such researchers like me and like most of the people like threat intel based researchers private investigators security researchers even vapt professionals right so they do osint they are people in business and cognitive intelligence as well so we talked about that so the very basic uh, uh basically pointer or a flow chart about how the analysis or how the osint procedure works i would say i would give you a very practical demonstration to that so as i said ki there is a mostly two parts data gathering and data analysis we have talked about that only ki data gathering is nothing but connect uh, nothing but getting data pointers getting different data pointers from different sources so we use sometimes we use tools we sometimes we made our own scripts sometimes we use certain google docs or certain techniques to get that particular data point after that we need to analyze that data to come to a conclusion that from where that data is from or from where the particular person or suspect is from so that contains that is totally in data analysis or as we know osint can help us in locating digital footprints artifacts so that means that total digital presence of a particular person let's say if i am a person who is who have a really great interest in let's say music so i would be following many pages to music as well so True. not only looking at my following or followers but also my digital activity maybe i have would been applying uh, i would be posting some of the content on uh, on the let's say uh, music music domain also many of the times i uh, what if i am a music lover no i would also comment on many of the youtube videos or many of the content i watch so the content i watch on social media or on uh, such public places <coughs> many of the times we try to link that mm-hmm. so as we said sensitive sensitive data is what we are looking for regarding osint so okay. whatever we are trying to do we are trying to get sensitive data pointers out of it and then conclude our investigation okay so talking about basic social media footprints uh, as we talk, as we as we just talked about ki social media right now is not just as basic as i am i'm i'm to a profile i'm uh, watching a profile and just gathering data out of it let's say i have a profile that is a private profile i have a private instagram profile and uh, i the, uh, the bio even even the bio of that profile it's it's kind of empty so if i am a open source intelligence analyst legally doing every single thing i am just trying to get inside that profile so i would make a sock <clears throat> sock is nothing but 
a random profile, a randomized profile. If I am doing this in interest of a particular law enforcement body or a particular legal entity, what I would do, I, I want to gather more and more data pointers about that particular person. And if that guy has a private account, so what I will do is I will first of all run some one or two background checks on him. Let's say I got to know that particular person is from Delhi University or that particular person, uh, that particular person, I, I got to know about two or three of his friends. So mm -hmm. let's say what I'll do is I'll simply make a sock account. I'm, I'll make a random uh, Instagram account. I'll, I'll name the account something that would be very luring to him. After that, I will put DU, IPCW or whatever college I have in my bio. After that, by increasing some of some of my followers, I would connect with two or three of his friends so that the account looks legit. After that, I'll try to connect him. And if I am into his account, so very basic thing that we talk about is people just go and uh, try uh, try to look to the post if if a person has uploaded his or his, uh, her location or not. So that is the very basic part. I would say if that person has not even located or uh, has not even uh, put a location to his photos or not even posted something. If you just look at their followers or followings, you can predict a lot. Let's say that particular <clears throat> person is following a particular university page mm -hmm. or particular uh, community page that he is a part of or mm -hmm. particular influencers who are in a particular space. Me as an investigator, as an analyst, I can predict a lot what are his interests, what he is inclined to, what I can lure him to and most of the factors. So this is about social media. No. So how to how to start this actually? If you if you talk about the practical aspects of that, what are the domains yeah. and how to start the OSNT? Any practical demonstrations you have for this, Omia? Yeah, yeah. Practically, I would say first of all, as you as you just asked me, what are the different domains of it? Yeah. So yeah. I would say there are many domains that requires OSINT or open source intelligence. So yeah. as we just talked about Webricon or Webint, we talk about it. So what is it? It is simply but. Uh, if it's nothing but gathering more and more information, more and more footprints about a particular website and particular things about a website. So we do that in VAPT or in bug bounty. We use some uh, ten, we tend to use some resources or tools or some of the things to gather uh, and analyze a particular website. But mm -hmm. talking about the demonstration point of view, I would say I would show you a really great example of OSINT in geo uh, geo intelligence. So geo intelligence or geo int, what is that? I would just start up by telling you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So before before talking about geo intelligence, I would be covering very simple, very layman basics that we all know about the about image images or uh, image forensics. So what is exif data? So as we obviously know that exif data is nothing but a particular uh, property is a particular uh, standardized format of an image is some of the data pointers that sometimes are left in an image just like as you can see in the data uh, in the um, screenshot i've shown mm -hmm. he many of the times what happens is a particular person has left his or her footprints in a particular photo so what happens is he post a photo uh, like exhibit data is not not available on social media platforms as i said if anybody is uploading any photo on any social media platforms, this uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anything. So they compress, they alter that exit data and we don't get results out of it. So exit okay. data, we can only, <clears throat> exit data, we can only get we, when we have a documented format of a photo from where the exit data is not removed. But what if we don't have an exit data? What if we just have an image and we want to locate that? We don't have any third party history or we don't have any uh, anything in regards to that. So okay. for that, I have recently done a really great example. So what we talk about is geolocating an image. So what is geolocating an image? Geo intelligence or was it? What is geosynth? So I am very inclined towards doing such challenges uh, uh, that that uh, that I do on my LinkedIn profile. So mm -hmm. what this challenge was all about? Key locating this particular pigeon, locating this particular pigeon from this image. So as you can see, if I just took this, if I if I can see the see this image alone, so what what exactly I can have? Uh, I don't have the exhibit data. I don't have the image properties. I don't have any background regarding the image. Mm -hmm. Just by by looking at this image, how can I analyze this image and get where this image is from? So I am very uh, fond of doing such challenges in my free time. So I did the challenge and I wrote a to totally full uh, what to say write up on it. Uh -huh. So it was nothing but so when so I would just tell you how I started. 
So first of all, what all entities or what all things we can figure out with this image? Number yeah, one thing that car. we we can see. We can see a car park there. All right, we can see a car park there, right? We mm -hmm. can see some sort of marble here. This yeah. doesn't look some uh, very uh, very common, right? Mm. It looks like some resort or some uh, particular, uh, um, basically <clears> resort <throat> point only, where uh, they have parked some mini boats, a mini something. And after that, very main thing that we can see is these griffatis. So of course, we are from India. I'm from India. I'm, I have no clue what these griffatis are. I'm not into the domain. What I did was number one thing I did was I took many crop screenshots out of it. What happened was I took crop screenshot out of it and I put that to Google. So of course, while reverse while doing reverse image lookup, we use some certain search engines. So let's say I use Google and let's say I use Yandex. What happens is he we use our search engines to identify objects or identify places or images. But okay. they are not very certain. Their AI is not very certain that if I'll search for a particular, uh, let's say, if I'll search for this whole image, mm -hmm. that that doesn't mean that Google give me the data for the whole image, right? We need to get data pointers to the very exact expect. So what I did was I took crop screenshot of all these Griffiths alone and I rotated them. What happens was I used Yandex Image Translator and after that I I got to know this is German. Okay. All right. So number one thing that clicked in my mind that this place is somewhere or near Germany. Number one thing that I got to know. When I tried to research more on these pointers, I wouldn't. Uh, I I was not able to relate that what they have written or what not. But number one thing that was sure is that this is from Germany. Germany. Yeah. Second, this pigeon is uh, is a really great kind of a distraction if you talk about a search engine or a reverse image lookup. Because mm -hmm. if I'll if I'll put this image in any reverse image space, let's say I'll just search it right, uh, search it right now, mm -hmm. right? So let's say ki I'll go to Yandex image lookup. And I'll simply search for this particular image. I'll just crop this out uh, the bottom text just a second. Right, so I'll just crop this. And uh, let's say I search even for this particular uh, factor, but I won't get most of the pointers, right? Uh, the in Yandex is very confused right now. Yandex is telling me because it is focusing on this pigeon. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, right now Yandex is just a just a um, what to say, just a search engine which is letting me index different uh, options. So you can see we we can just have the uh, whole uh, thing for a pigeon. But what if? I want to remove this pigeon and then search for um, this image. So I'll go to a simple, very simple uh, open source website. That is remove object. Uh, yeah. And my simple course of action would be to remove this particular pigeon at this right away. So I'll simply use this very basic uh, and layman website. To just brush this out. So what will happen is what this website exactly does is it removes a particular object on basis of and it uh, mix out colors. So on the basis of different colors in the image and the <coughs> background, it just removes that. So you can see right now the particular image I'm having it's a lot of clear. What mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll crop a screenshot out of it. I'll crop and save Very that particular too. screenshot, right? Mm -hmm. Then I will go to Yandex again. Now, when I try to search for that particular image, I can get a lot of identical factors or identical images. So let's say this image looks the most identical. But if I try to just compare this image with uh, this one, where it was, yeah. So as you can see, the marble here and the marble here is a lot of different. No. Yeah. <clears throat> my second course of action would be to identify which marble is this. Mm -hmm. Now to identify which marble is this, I would simply crop this marble and then search from Yandex because that is a really if I, if we talk about search engines, no, that is a really 
um, easy pointer to search for. Like in terms of searching the whole scenery, Yandex will give me you can better capture results. a particular object. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we we will get we will capture better results when I talk just about the particular marble. So let's yeah. say I search that image again. It went back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when I'm searching that particular image again, I can see some identical. Exactly. Right. But still now I need to figure out that this marble, that particular set of marble is matching to the thing I was looking before or not. It's and not an easy job. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So right now, of course, this particular marble or a particular uh, home or a building here. I need to figure out what are the identical factors about this image. So number one thing, there is a sea or a, sorry, kind of a water uh, river thing in front of it. Also in the right side, it is not covered with any other building. There is a tree. There are two ma massive tree that are very identical, right? Hmm. So that would be the secondary uh, factor to that. So let's okay. say when, I, yeah. So let's say here, the image I got, where was it? Huh. So. It is satisfying the number number two identical factors thing. Like it, it's satisfying the board thing and the right one thing. So now what I'll do, I'll try to see. And the number one thing that is, uh, you, you should notice that it is uploaded on Instagram, right? So now my whole investigation is linked to Instagram. I, I, I need to get the particular profile of that person who uploaded this image on Instagram. And what does he said? So as you can see, let's say I got this profile. It's a total mm -hmm. open source profile I'm able to view. As mm -hmm. you can see, it's public and also this, um, she have posted a lot of images here. So I need to log in to investigate on that. But I would just suggest, I would just uh, give you an overview regarding my investigation here. <clears throat> so what I did and what I figured out here after this was that the particular marble that was used here was called Calcutta purple. So okay. I use Yandex only. I see, see, see here in Yandex only. If an image is uploaded, I can also write some certain factors or keywords regarding that image to filter out my queries. Okay. So this, this gave me a lot great, uh, what to say, point of view regarding my investigation queries. So as Understood. you can see, yeah. So as you can see, after that, I know, got to know that this particular, uh, this particular graffiti was from Germany. So mm -hmm. my whole point that uh, right now, my visualization for this image is if this image is from Germany, the back end marble is from Calcutta purple, right? Okay. And the image I saw on Yandex just as that, just, uh, that I just show you, right? That particular image that was from. So if you will analyze this Instagram profile right now, uh, of course, as I have not logged in, so this is from also from Germany. <clears throat> okay. I afterwards, when I got to know about that particular, uh, uh, this particular place, what I did was I tried searching for this place on Google Earth. Right? Okay. Let's say I got this, um, this, this, uh, this query, uh, this page, eight weeks page. So right now, what, what exactly it is telling me about this page? So it is CZ Republic and the historical capital of Bohemia. Okay. So it is. So now what I can see is it is on the will. Will tower river, right? <clears> Number <throat> one. Mm -hmm. so what I'll go, I, I'll what I'll do is I'll simply go to Google Earth. I'll open this. It's totally free. You can download the, all these uh, factors from that. After that, I'll simply search for that particular river. Also, this particular river, there are three total rivers in the same region. So now I have to analyze all three rivers from different points. So what I did was I zoomed there and as you can see, right, as you can see, I can have a 3d perspective of it. Now, wow. now I want to street view this particular site. So let's say I'll go to here and it's still the exit ground way, but uh, many of our times we have the um, street views as well. <clears throat> for mm -hmm. that, I would like to just change the location. So let's say uh, this doesn't look very identical. So let's say I'll go and put this street map here. 
so here i can then just view the different profiles of that particular region so okay this is not the thing we are looking for right the wiltava river mm -hmm. so i'm not going to do the whole thing again because as we don't have much time but uh, as we can see as i have written the in the um, investigation as well so we'll just open the exact uh, location for the pigeon here so yeah it was under opposite to manas bridge so after that what happened was i tried to when i removed the pigeon i searched for different places i got to know the cesia country in europe bordered by australia so number one thing that uh, it is near germany it got cleared so it's it saying mm -hmm. like uh, right ki germany to the west after that i i'm like uh, viewed that particular place on <coughs> google earth pro okay it's 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 a lot of difference so we have to analyze many such rivers to finally get to that exact point now when i was here na when i was investigating and i was here so my only point was to figure out ki where that pigeon was sitting so as you can see it was wow. sitting on a particular pillar of a griffathi right yeah now not every pillar has griffathi i yeah. want to look into the exact pillar that has griffathi so let's say i go to here street map wow i'm finally here right so here was that particular uh, house you were talking about and here is that particular um uh, what to say <coughs> uh, this i uh, here is the particular uh griffathi pillar yeah. so now i have to figure out a way from way, uh, from a an angle that i can get that so let's say i go more forward mm, for some reason i'm not able to go but i'll go again yeah so this was the particular point when i figured out so i will say simply just view this here yeah so as you can see yeah same one yeah this was the particular pillar where the pigeon was sitting and this was the image image so that was the whole conclusion of this so, challenge so so how long how long it took you to collect all this information <laughs> a lot of time so as i said uh, when when the first time i got to know that uh, which which country or which place that uh, trip advisor page was from <clears> right <throat> the number one thing that happened was ki as you can see here number one thing that happened is ki this page na so this hmm. building is also many times like this building is not only one hmm. this particular resort na in that particular place republic place if i'll just show you and open this uh, image so as you can see the location it is telling me right away break keywords like break political culture but hmm. the location we have opened here it's not that you understand Understood. So my point is that it's not that that uh, if I if I if I if I can just leverage Yandex or any such search engine to get a particular uh, such such set of image, that is not that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, right. We have to find more and more such identical pointers. So like, yeah, it took a while, and after that, uh, while viewing these speed points, I found uh, this uh, particular pillar, and then I was very sure that, as you can see here, and as you can see, uh, this was the image we were looking for. so there are many such uh, geo intelligence challenge or ocean challenges that uh, you can do that people can do and uh, even i am i did i, I did also did one more uh, regarding uh, this but mm -hmm. we, we can talk about this uh, some another while sure sure so, yeah this was it, it about okay the, yeah. so actively if you if we looking for the information like this kind of a process and all that i think it will take around uh, 24 hours to 48 hours to do such kind of analysis or i can say that see it all depends on our luck and also the amount of data that we are filtering in right okay. many times these things are just one click away and we are mm -hmm. going the very hard way down right so Understood. it is very uncertain yeah uncertain ki we can just uh, <clears throat> give them a time for 24 48 hours but yeah, yeah it it takes a lot of time to uh manually singly uh, like singly single handedly analyze every single data pointer and then yeah. look for footprints that's great but that is really a very quick overview about you know how we basically does the osnt and, and you know i'm sure you know in this video the way we have started a session where we discuss about basics and carry challenge and the practical demonstration i'm sure it can be a you know the great value uh, to the you know people who are looking for this information and and really thanks omia you know to to share entire thing in in one one hour 30 minutes and taking out the time in a week that's not a normal thing so 
I truly appreciate your time uh, to taking out for this particular schedule for session. Sorry. Thanks a lot for calling me, and uh, I'm very, very grateful to have you have myself on your platform. So I'm very certain that many people, many people, many persons who are starting up in the domain would uh, would have got a very great uh, criteria on how to begin and what are the different aspects of the field. Yeah. So are you open for mentoring also? Like you know, if we when we when this video goes live on YouTube, you know, there will be a lot of questions will be there on OSNT. So are you okay to share? Can I share your LinkedIn profile in the description box of the video so people can reach out to you directly? Ha ha. For sure, uh, you can share the contacting factors. I'm totally up for mentoring as well. Yeah. That's great. So team and uh, you know, it's not like a. Uh, punishment and all that but on the live session we are taking this request uh, if you're looking forward for next session with mr Somia, do let me know in comment box and uh, and do let me know what is the content you want from mr Somia to cover in the next session so i'm going to disturb him again i'm sure so will not mind <laughs> and uh, we'll have more content like that and to be frank i had a different perception about osnt and you gave me a different perspective about the OSN and thanks for that at least for me it was an informative session which gave me the high level idea about how things works in the OSN because so far I was in an impression about just it's an information gathering but it can be used beyond that so thanks thanks for that Somya thanks thanks for calling me thanks for the message and, and Somya before we wind up this particular session like you know any last closure point you want to say to our subscribers or students aspiring students who who want to make a career in this in this vertical so number one thing i would suggest is ki if you have a eye for detail so that would be the exact phrase i would like to <clears> use <throat> if you have an eye for detail then this field is for you so mm -hmm. not only talking about ocean set intelligence or any such thing even if you are doing geo intelligence if you are locating a particular so what's the use case of uh, what we just showed ki how how to locate an image and all so the use case for this is when you are working with any ed or any um, law enforcement agency or also if you are a particular uh, independent investigator or if mm -hmm. you are searching for uh, different cases in this aspects, or if mm -hmm. you even many of our times we in uh, threat intelligence as well, we are uh, we are having some certain pics or screenshots in Shodan as well, right? Mm -hmm. we, when we search about uh, different queries in Shodan, and sometimes we re receive some uh, single-handed snapshots. So we want to analyze from where that particular snapshot was taken, and by by doing doing such aspects, we can do that. So OSINT is a very vast field, as just like cyber security, threat intelligence. So every field has different aspects if you want to make a career in it i would say don't go the easy way out don't just use tools or uh, don't just use third party options to create a query just try mm -hmm. to do or make something a single or uh, many single many things for yourself or many techniques that would uh, help you in your investigations so that would be the final note key OSINT is going to be a really great and uh, big domain in future in india as well but also if you are just starting up i would say don't go the easy way just try to go to the advanced way and try to promote this field. Yeah, that's that's great. And thanks, thanks, Somia, for taking out the time for this particular session. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, bro. Thank you. So this is all from our side. And uh, if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss our future videos. And do let me know what are the further videos you want to make with Somia. And I'm sure Somia, I'm going to disturb Somia a lot for the further more topics. Thanks. Thanks, team.